Did you base one needle? CPS. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Little Mo, aka The Little Mo Show, at Shea Bella Salon with my sister. Hey! Have a seat. Uh, anyway. <laughs> We're at the Scorpio <laughs> show. Well, actually, I am because I'm the Zuba star with Kevin and Mikel. Check it out, boobies. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on YouTube? It's Kevin and Mikkel. We are back with a new video. Now before I start this video off, I, I got some announcement to make. Let me tell y'all something. The Scorpion Show is going on its fourth year, which is August 15th. Now I know we got fans, but we need stands, okay? We need y'all stands to stand out for the Scorpion Show. Because y'all don't be standing out for us like that. We need y'all to tell everybody about the Scorpion Show. Just like y'all did that little boy that danced to Beyonce on Countdown. The way y'all spread that video around. That's what we need y'all to do. We need y'all to inbox people. Tweet these celebrities. Tell them that they need to come on the Scorpion Show. Tell other people that probably don't even watch us to watch the Scorpion Show. This is going on our fourth year. When you watch the Scorpion Show, we need y'all to click that thumbs up button. Like, it's not hard. If you watch on your PlayStation, your Xbox, your iPad, your iPod, your mobile device that's not, an I mean, that's not Apple, which is Android, click the thumbs up button. Or if you're sitting there in front of the computer, click that thumbs up button. Only take a second to go, boop, click that like button. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was going for nine days. Nine days. How we got 40,000 views and 3,000 likes. Now, come on now. Something ain't right. Now, we've been going 10 damn days. Nine days. Nine days. Nine, nine days. And I let six me and my okay. <laughs> We need y'all support, y'all. For real, we need y'all support. What's going, what's going on our fourth year? We need y'all to really... Because you know it's that time where we got to show, show and prove, show and prove. We can't have y'all saying, oh, y'all need to be on yeah. this, y'all need to be on that, and y'all ain't supporting us. We, need we can't be on TV if y'all ain't, if y'all, if y'all don't give us the views that we so <laughs> rightfully deserve. Okay. okay? I, I appreciate the tweets and the comments and the messages when y'all say y'all need to be on TV, TV is missing. Thank you, but we can't be on here. Yeah, but it ain't, it, it's all in the numbers. That's right. So... Was that a bird? Okay, didn't it sound like it was like right there? It sounds like it's in here. No, it's not in here, but it sounds like it's right there. I don't live here. Yes. So the Scorpion show, we were going for nine days. You know, we were going, we were in Atlanta. And you know, it, it what happened, what's so funny is that Mikel booked his trip to Atlanta before me and didn't even tell me. Because it was a secret. And I booked my own trip that same damn weekend. How ironic that we were down there. Um, I want to say, first I'm going to give a shout out to Tron, because Tron let me stay at his house. You know, I, I gladly slept on the couch for two of those days, that, well, three of those days that I was there for my whole trip. <laughs> and then where'd you sleep after? Oh, oh no, no. I just remember. <laughs> never mind. Thank you so much, Tron. Uh, shout out to Jerome and shout heart. out to Ty Wells. Um, you, let me tell y'all something. I got to give a big shout out to Miss Funky Dineva. Because um, Friday, I got a chance to hang out with him. And we went to uh, 12 restaurant, which I've never been before. And just the whole conversation that we had over drinks and good ass food. Mikel was there and everything. That food was just so good. And just him hearing him talk and everything. Like, he is more than what meets the eye. And... You know, I, I got a lot of inspiration from him just talking to him and just seeing what he, what he wants to do and where he wants to go. And hearing him talk, you know, I felt like I lost a little bit of my passion and what I do, you know, for the Scorpion Show. Like, you know, like how I used to do my reviews and everything. Like, could somebody fall, I'm talking about it. Somebody do this, I'm talking about it. And it's just like, now it's like, yeah, well, I'll just get to it when I get to it. But talking to him, I felt like a spark 
you know, a spark went and they be like, bitch, you need to get back on your shit. You need to keep doing what you used to do. So I'm going to get back to doing that. But just, you know, Funky Dineva, it, 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 like, it was just, it was just an amazing experience. And he wasn't dressed up like how, you know, you see him on the videos. He was just his regular self. And we, we just had a ball. We all had a ball for about maybe three hours. We, we left, we was there for about three hours. Yeah, we were there about three hours. Just Kiki and, you know, he filled us in on a lot of gossip that goes on in ATL and, you know, it was just, it was just a fun experience and I didn't record it, sorry, I, I didn't record none of this trip. I don't like to record my trips because I just like to experience and I don't like to feel like I'm at work. I just like to have a good ass time. But y'all know my black ass party, party, party the whole time I was there, except for Monday night. Mondays I don't really go out. But I partied, I met a lot of nice people. I met one person that, not saying stood out, but just like his whole story, like, like I really liked him and you know, I'm gonna help him, you know, introduce him to other people that's down there. So, you know, who knows what might happen with him, you know? But it was just like, I don't even wanna talk about it because that's the story to tell, but I just, it, it's just, I don't know what's the word, how can I explain it? Well, I, I find it interesting that you brought it up, but you don't want to talk about it, because I want to know. I don't know what you're talking about. I would like to know. I'm sure yeah, I didn't because like you didn't know, because no. right after you left, what, right, the dinner? right after you left the club Sunday, uh -huh. he came over. And I said, you could come in and sit, sit with us, because let me tell y'all something. When we in VIP, who were you sitting with? Because when I left, you were sitting by yourself. He came over and sat with me. Uh -huh. I told him to come up in there and sit, you know? Talk. So we was talking, and then we went. Well, you, but don't say his name. But tell the story. What's the story? Okay. <laughs> really? I have no idea. Cause I really, about, so I, yeah, talking. I know, I know, I know, I know. Well, maybe he'd be able to talk about it one day. Um, he lost his sister. Mm -hmm. Um, she was murdered by her ex-boyfriend, mm -hmm. and he shot. He killed himself, mm -hmm. and he shot his stepson. And his steps, yeah. Okay. And like the stepson is still trying to, you know, recover, recover and everything. But just like his story doing that, him trying to become an actor and everything, his whole like his whole story just really touched me. And what he is going through, like I can I can only imagine a little bit of it, but I can feel some of it because I still feel pain about my nephew and everything. And I don't know what the hell it is, but it's like, it's going on five years. So now, like, some stuff just, just make me cry. And it, it has to do with him. But sometimes this sad stuff and, and me dealing with that, it just makes me very emotional. Because it's like, I'm thinking to myself, like, I think I, I don't, damn, I'm giving my own self counseling. I need to go to counseling or some type of therapy because, you know, it just, just certain stuff just touched me and just makes me cry. But his story, just talking to him and sitting there talking to him and, you know, me being me being through what I've already been through is like, you know, don't give up, keep doing this and, you know, and I just met him, like, it's only like three days now, you know, we cool, you know, we real cool. And he's actually coming up here because his um his nephew's being sent to CHOP. So he's, okay. that's, you know, that's one of the best hospitals. For children. Yeah, so, you know, he's just a very nice guy and... You know, it's you know what I notice about Atlanta. It's like when I go down there, I always meet nice people or people that's ambitious and goal oriented, and they want to do things in life. I'm not down in my city, but it's you don't meet those type of people here. You don't meet a lot of them. And I know y'all might say, well, you got to change your surrounding. Our gay scene is not very big at all, so uh, it's just it's just regular here. Like down there, I, I feel a connection down there. I'm moving there one of these days. I think in 2014 I should be living there. Well, you know, the scene here is very small. That's why I don't go out. Mm -hmm. It's just too small. Every weekend it's the same faces at the same club every weekend. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I know you like to go out a lot and I know a lot of people who do. I just, I, 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 
I often like look at you guys who do that and I often say to myself, how can you guys go out every weekend and party with the same faces every weekend and at the same clubs? Mm -hmm. I don't know how y'all do it. That's why I don't do it. Because I just feel as though for me, twice, maybe every other month is enough for me. Because I don't see every weekend or every other weekend partying with the same people. Yeah. Every and in Atlanta you got a choice. Like you got at least three different clubs to go to at night. Like and some, then the clubs are not. We don't even have that many clubs here. No, no. You we, can and, name all the and clubs. Philly is a game monopoly. Yeah. Yeah. So it it's is. like I don't see how. And you're actually, doing. Friday nights we really don't have no way to go no more. <laughs> not really. I know so, where we can go. Yeah, the bed. Yeah. yeah today. Shut the hell up. Ain't nobody yeah. got time for the bed. But Atlanta, let me tell y'all, y'all was a lot of fun. Shout out to Messy Miles. Shout out to uh, Joe Work who. It was so good seeing, not good, but it was weird seeing him drunk because he was out of his element and he was tore up. Shout out to A.O. Young Star. Shout out to um, Candy, man. Candy went to lunch on Friday and you know, basically I ordered all the damn food. She only ordered one thing. So her meal was only $5 and of course mine was $40. Of course I remember the price. I'm like, girl, let me, let me just take care of that. You know? Um, who else I went out with? Um, shout out to Kid Court and Boy Revolution and Tavon. We had, and and the Braxtons. They took me to. They invited me to come to some hood club. When I tell you it was deep in the hood, Mikel, it was deep in the hood. To where I was like, bitch, I'm not. I don't want to park too far from the door, because it was. It was. It just looked like it was going to be a lot going on. You don't want to park too far from the door. Yeah. You don't drive. No, no, but I didn't want um, I didn't want Devil in the park away uh, from the damn. You don't uh, want to park. I'm like, look. I'm about to say, wait. I know you ain't. You don't drive. Like, oh, but I did study the driving manual. Oh. I studied the no. I studied the hell out of that thing. I bet. I know my signs and shit now. Do you? Yeah. So I'm definitely working on that uh thing. Don't don't worry. I, I I'm, I'm I'm doing a lot of shit that I'm supposed to be doing. But yeah. So, uh, uh, Tay Dove, who um, is an assistant to Tawanda and Trina, you know, he had a birthday party at Club Esso's in Atlanta. And, you know, the club was the club is a nice size. It's a nice, big club. But my problem was, these are the Braxtons. Y'all need to be having drinks in there like, like that. And there was no drinks there like that. I had to leave that area to go to the bar. <laughs> well, maybe to did get you ever? Drinks. Did you ever stop to think? No shade, but did you ever stop to think that the, these are the Braxtons are only the Braxtons to you and not to them? No, but they they promoting them. So if you're well, promoting them, yeah, you're, you're, right, you're right. But Tawanda you're did right. tell me to shave. Okay. But I'm sure because I'm, I'm sure there was shade. Yeah, yeah. Right. First of all, what are you doing with black people? <laughs> so I'm like, how the hell you got to, Trina's name on the flyer? Like, bitch, where's the fucking drink set, you know? And then, oh my gosh, she was performing. They kept fucking up the music. Oh, no. She was like, bitch, I'm not coming out. Oh, no. It was, it was, oh, was oh, no. That's, that's an automatic no. It was a whole lot going You mess up on. the music, that's an automatic no. Yes. They're like, if you ain't come to party, then you she's like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I'm not ready and... And they was playing the song. And they just, the song just kept on playing. Oh. And then she came out and then re-performed the song. Oh, no! Yeah, it was, a, it was a hot, it was a hot mess. But then I was trying to get the fuck out of there, you know, so... Oh, no. So Tawanda stops me and her and Zoe in the car. Hey, Zoe, how you doing? You know, she stops me, we talking and everything. Then all of a sudden, she was like, y'all better be safe now. So she, soon as she pulls off, why this guy come out of nowhere talking about, yeah, so where the after hours at tonight? We was like, we don't know nothing about no after hours. He said, y'all dressed too clean to not know where the after hours uh -huh. is tonight. That's a ride. That's I said, bitch, let's go. <laughs> Devin, let's go. We got next. I said, make sure this door is locked. The door was locked. And we was the fuck out of there. And then I, um... You know, one of the guys said that to me the night I got robbed. One of the robbers, yeah, you dress too nice not to have no money. And I'm thinking, like, all I had on was a hoodie and a pair of cargo pants. And I'm like, and all I had in my pocket was $8. And I'm like, what the heck? But you know, bums, anything is nice to a bum when they rob you. Sure. Okay? Let's get the fuck out of here.
Cause we got out of there, and then I um we did the let out at 595. That's when I seen Daniva again, and I met Rico Chappelle. Shout out to Rico, cause Rico was my favorite contestant on um oh my god the fashion show when Kelly Rowland was the host. But overall, I enjoyed myself in Atlanta. Atlanta, thank you so much for showing me all of that love. Shout out to the people that we met at, um, saying that, fuck them Lennox? Yeah, shout out to the people that we met at Lennox. And, you know, I'll be seeing you guys Thanksgiving weekend when I celebrate my 28th birthday. My birthday is on a Tuesday, but I'm celebrating that Thanksgiving weekend. Um, so how was your trip? You know, you ain't talking, mm, mm, mm. Did you just say, I didn't talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> Did he just say you to talk about it? I was gonna ask you, you done? But go ahead, girl. We got all day. Y'all got all weekend because y'all know we ain't coming back Monday. Go ahead. Well, my weekend was fun. You know, I I had fun in Atlanta. It was the first. This is my third trip and trip to Atlanta. Excuse me. And I had more fun this time than I've ever had. Um, shout out to Crub. Crub. What is the matter with my speech? Shout out to Club. Cream. Yes, they took because we had a really good time there. Um, the DJ was shouting us out mm -hmm. all night, which was really nice of them to do. Um, I just had fun. I had a lot of fun. I met a lot of nice people. Um, it just was a fun trip, a really fun trip, and like it was fun. Don't go. Mikel is not telling everything. But and everything is not supposed to be told. Now let's get no, to this video. Nah, no, no, nah. Let's get to it's weird. Please, Mikel. Mikel, what, what are y'all talking about? Oh, um, he said it's where I stayed. Or is that you? Is that's that's him, him and that's me. He want me to stay in perimeter when I come there. Oh, it's, that's, that's the hotel that I stayed at. It's a nice hotel. You stayed at the hotel? Um, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that one. Yeah, because they got a good price going on, like $84 a, a night. price when I went there. And that's why I stayed there. Yeah, so that's um, what, and it's that's not too I far from Linux. Okay. I just, it was actually a straight run down peach tree peach. done wood. Yeah, it's all it's all them fucking peach trees down there. Yeah, what? But I, know, I'm, I don't fucking know. They're accessible peaches. By the time I, by the time November come, I should be driving. But I won't be driving in no clubs. Why? Because I drink. Oh yeah, that's And they is strict down there. They be doing breathalyzers, bitch. They come out of nowhere. But yes, Atlanta, thank you so much. And hopefully, you guys will be seeing the Scorpion show soon. Um, back down in Atlanta. Well, y'all know I come back down in November. Um, so let's talk about what's been going on all last week and still going on today. Direct TV versus Viacom. As you guys know, I am a Direct TV subscriber. And I am very disappointed in Viacom. It's not Direct TV, and I am like I've been back on Direct TV. We had it for 12 years, and you know they've never had any issues like this. If they ever had any issues with a, a cable company, they'd be like, "Child, it's going to be worked out. Don't worry about it." And like, so only like a day or two before they say they're going to take something off, it's already resolved. But Viacom issue is they want to charge 30% more to DirecTV customers for their 17 channels. It's not really 26 channels. Those extra channels are just an HD, but they added it up to 26. So, you know, what, what's, re what's really bad about it is Viacom told DirecTV, if we don't have a new contract by this date, do not show our programmings to your subscribers. So that means Viacom has the, the right to do that, which makes it look like DirecTV is being bad because DirecTV, I mean Viacom hired all of these people, all of these celebrities to make videos and tweet, oh DirecTV is dropping us, how dare they do that when actually it's Viacom. It's Viacom doing this whole fucking shady shit. So what DirecTV said, I'm going to need y'all, if, if we can't, if y'all can't watch the program here, Go to that website and watch the shows because they show them for free. Y'all know Viacom shady asses. Now they're not showing no new episodes on none of the websites. Mm. So you can't even know what's going on with Love and Hip Hop if somebody didn't upload it to YouTube. Which I think is very childish by Viacom. Because you're hurting your fucking ratings in the process of you trying to be shady to DirecTV. Now I've seen reports that 
their um viewership done dropped by thirty something percent. People are switching, right? Yeah, people. Yeah. Some people are switching, but I don't think you should switch because in some channels that Directv have that other providers don't have. Yeah, but but my, why not switch? Because who wants to go through this? Why should the why should the paying customers have to go through that? Because when you have a, a if because. you listen, if you have if you have a great cable company mm -hmm. and they're fighting for you saying we're not trying to charge you, mm -hmm. they are trying to charge you and we're not having it. So would you want somebody that's for you or against you? I want somebody who's for me, but in the process, I am now paying for channels that I can't even watch. Well, I'm pretty sure they're giving out discounts and but, but why, I know they gave out free channels. But why do I have to go through that? Nobody you know, even knows how long that's going to last. Let me tell you something. As long as I can remember, we have always been a part of Comcast. A lot of people don't like Comcast because they're standing too high, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. I've never had DirecTV. I've never had, dealt with them. We've always had Comcast. We've never had this problem before. Never, ever, ever. We've never had a channel taken away from us. We've never had another company say, oh, well, it doesn't make sense why they're doing that. And then at the end of the day, the customers have to pay for it. And then now the customers have to sit back and wait and not watch their favorite TV shows or their favorite channels because Viacom and DirecTV want to act like children. Mm -hmm. And so now in the process, okay, we may be getting discounts, but we're missing out on our shows. And not only can we watch them on, our, on TV, mm -hmm. now we can't even watch them on the internet. Then that's that's the shadiness of yeah. icon. So then why why that. why should I sit by and wait for you to figure this out? Why not just go to another game? Well, I mean, hey, if you if you could break your contract like that and pay DirecTV to leave them, then go ahead and do it. That should be that that should that should be against the law to do stuff like that, especially when your customers are paying. Mm -hmm. Especially when they're paying. Well, look, well, I don't look, care if they are. I'm glad I'm glad that's that cool. DirecTV is fighting that fight because. If DirecTV don't do it, then you know they're they're gonna upcharge other cable companies. DirecTV saying, "Bitch, your ratings is not even up to par. How dare you try to make us pay you a billion dollars more for your programmers when y'all not even number one? Y'all not even doing the numbers that y'all used to do. You, how you want a billion dollars? So they just came and just said, you know what? On Monday, so and so, we're taking all these channels. Yeah. If you don't, the, the, actually, the contract ended June 30th. So wait, how are you able to watch Love and Hip Hop? Because I was at Tron House on Monday. So this next Monday, you won't be able to watch it. If they don't settle this thing, no. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure it's always it's always t you can watch TV on the internet. So that's true. But what channels don't y'all have? We just don't have Nickelode Nickelodeon, MTV, BET, CMT. Comedy Central, Spike TV. Oh wow! Um, that's all I know. Cause those. VH1. Yeah, I say VH1. Yeah, yeah. Oh, VH1, Centric, VH1 Classic. Okay, so y'all y'all don't VH1 have, Classic. but y'all don't have all the major channels that young people watch. Young people watch music channels, and you just named majority of music channels. Yeah. And comedy. Well, let me channels. tell you. And here, and if if my nieces, my nieces watch Disney anyway. They watch no, that I'm, just, just, I'm not I'm talking about in this house, I'm yeah. talking about in general. Yeah. But you know young people from the ages of what, 16 to 20 something are basically watching music channels mm -hmm. or comedy channels like BT and stuff like that. They're basically taking away channels that young people watch. I don't know too many young people who watch the news. Mm, no. No. So basically with DirecTV doing it, I don't know if they gave out HBO yet, but I definitely know they gave out Encore and I think they're giving away Showtime for six months for free to their customers. I think, I think it's a good... I think it's a, a a good trade, and some people are even getting discounts if you already have those channels. But I hope that Directv and Viacom gets it together. But Viacom, y'all being too fucking greedy, and I'm glad that Directv is fighting this fight because y'all won't be able to do this to any other cable company out there. So Directv, keep fighting the fight, and I'll just keep sneak, sneaking and watching it on somebody's internet. So um, <laughs> speaking of VH1. Let's talk about this Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. I know we ain't talking about last week. I ain't gonna talk about it. This week, I, 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 I've, I've observed some things. And to me, I don't know. These women, they're falling in love over Stevie J fighting over him. All of that shit is irrelevant to me. By watching him, he reminds me of an abuser. And... Like, I think that when those cameras not there, he might beat those women. That, that's just what I get. The way he talks to them, the way he just, like, makes that face. And sometimes he'll forget the camera's there before he catches himself. You know, that's what Stevie J gives me. Um, Mimi, 
girl, you just slow. You still just don't fucking get it. Like, you are just, you're not in love with Stevie J. You're in love with the dick and the money. You're, you're in love with the perks that come along with fucking Stevie J. That's what I think you're comfortable with. Rick Rihanna. That's what she looks like to me. What's her fucking name? Jocelyn. Jocelyn. You're just as dumb as a bag of rocks. Like, you just, you really just don't get it. You want to give up anything and anything for Stevie? Like, Stevie's name don't ring fucking bells, bitch. Apparently it's Carly it does. Bitch, and this Carly Red bitch, let me tell you something. They saying she 40 or she might be 47. Whatever she's doing, she's doing it the fuck well. Because Carly gives me a good late 20s, early 30s. No. That's what she gives I'd me. I would say mid 30s. I wouldn't sure. say late 20s. Well, you know, that's, that's what I'm saying. She looks older than K. Michelle. And K. Michelle gives me late 20s, early 30s. <laughs> she does. K. Michelle gives me late 20s, early 30s. And Carly does not give me the same age as K. Michelle. She gives me a little up in age. She don't give me no 50, mm -hmm. no, because that's too old. And she really don't give me 40. Her body is amazing. She that's has a really good body. I don't care if she paid for it. I don't care. Yeah, I don't she care. looks she good. Great body. Yeah. Whoever, if she did pay for it, she went to the right doctor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Carly Red, now girl, let's be for real. I didn't know you was a hoe like that. Oh, God. Girl, if you done been through every man in life, how can we take you seriously? Mona Scott, why did you cast her? <laughs> My thing is, Mona, like you, what, what, like I don't know why it took me so long to realize this, where is she but finding these women? where did she find them, and what type of career could they possibly have besides hosting a club? Except for K. Michelle and Rashida. Everybody else, nobody's caring about Erica at the Love and Hip Hop. Nobody gives a fuck about Mimi because she's dumb. Nobody's buying no Jocelyn record, and who gives a fuck about a Carly Red? How about that? You missed Ariana. Who the fuck is Ariana? <laughs> Arena. Who is that? Mimi's lesbian friend. Oh, girl, bye. She could have a seat too. She's just a supporting cast member. But it's just like, it's stupid. This whole show is stupid. Mama D, you're mad at Erica because she didn't. Stay with your child. She had to miss work. Allegedly, Scrappy not paying for the child support and everything. So she got to go out there and work. That's her fucking ex boyfriend. She ain't got to be there for him. She ain't got to get. She ain't got to call out of work for nothing to be there for him. But wait a minute. I don't understand how he's not paying child support, but he's walking around with all those diamonds. Child, diamonds. something going on. I don't know. He wanted to get dropped off the child support. Hell no. Don't you do that. You don't drop his ass off no well, child support. You know what? You know what I find so amazing and so funny is when men who are the father of these children and who are paying child support suddenly say they want to be dropped from. Mm -mm. And then he had the nurse say that on TV that he wanted to be dropped from child support. No, he, he ain't gonna get dropped. So basically, dropped. he doesn't want to continue to pay for his child. No, I don't know what he's gonna do. I don't know if he's if he thinks he's there all the time for the child. Like, we didn't even see the child on the show yet. So don't. we don't even know what type of mother Erica is or anything like that. But Mama D, you need to have a seat. You need to cut the umbilical cord from him. And what's up with you crawling on that table like he was your man to give him a kiss on the cheek? Did you see that? No. She was like, oh, Mama's baby. And she going off on all fours to crawl up on that bed to kiss him on the cheek. See, that shit don't look right. Scrappy yeah. ain't your man, okay? And she asked just, if he is her man. Okay, she can have a seat. Oh, several. And something that reclines. Because <laughs> okay. aren't you tired of sitting up in Scrappy's business? All the time. Okay. I like I like Erica's mom. Because Erica's mom is real. She, and she, she real old yeah, with yeah. those hairstyles mm -hmm. and Darion jumpsuits. she been through it all. She yeah. like, bitch. Do you see her Darion no. Jean jumpsuit she had on last night? No, she had not Darion for real. Yes, Miss Taylor, you better work at least somebody. Somebody. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. But love him. Ah! This K. Michelle and Carly Rick. K. Michelle, I think it was that was a cheap shot. It was a cheap shot, but you had to do what you had to do. Carly Red, if she was gonna be fucked up, you would have went back there to go beat her ass. You sitting there crying. Fuck that. Those cameramen would have to stop me from getting back there to get somebody. I ain't gonna let nobody just do that like that. No. Um, the fuck I was at? Like this show is fucking too. It's too. What's the word? 
scripted. Yeah. Shit just okay. don't be happening out the blue like that. that. Remember you told me? I, I, I know. I was like, oh, me. I was like, no, you can't even real. make this shit up. I just this is so but, but, but Jocelyn Tears is for real though. Her tears are for real. But Mama D is definitely scripted. Because she's way in that order. She's scripted and coked up because mm. um, she's on something. <laughs> <laughs> she's on Xanax, Coke, Viacom, D DHS. I, oh, direct, she's on something, okay? Cause she, I'ma tell her, Mama, like, where was fucking Mama D at when her son needed somebody there? Why you ain't call her Scrappy? Pimping somebody, that's what she was yeah. doing. Out pimping somebody. Mm. Let me tell you something. I, you know what I can't tell you? Oh my God, and then Bucky. Ooh, did you see oh, that when they put her picture with Muffy Crosswire? No, but how about when she had the nerves to say, well, if Erica's not doing her job, she's there to do it for her. You know what, Bucky? It's women like you that give women like me a bad name. Mm. <laughs> I know you better say that. Okay. Okay. Because we be trying to keep them, and you want to come along and take them. Mm. You going to sit there. You supposed to be his, quote, unquote, best friend. With friends like that, who needs Girl, enemies? Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't know what's going on. You know, they got a picture for every cartoon character. <laughs> <laughs> Shay need to have, no, Shay need to go somewhere. She don't need to be on this show. She's just there just to be on this she, show. She what, has she, a beautiful show body, loving, I mean, flavor, 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 right? flavor, yeah, love for the flavor, love, and charm school. She looked, that body is amazing. I will give but her that. But it looks like she can't walk. Every time she got on, when she got on clothes, like they too small, too tight, that she can't walk, moving her body. And Scrappy just love it. He probably they, they, they probably got something good for sex. I would love to see that sex take. Okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> but Shay, you need to go somewhere and sit all the way down with that golden retriever sitting on your hand. <laughs> Scrappy told me something. Mom and D told me something. Oh, yeah. Because he ain't had no way to get to. Yes, he did. All he had to do was grab that horse and sand it up off of Shay's okay. hand. Okay. And gallop his, his, his ass on down to the hospital. <laughs> That's all Bucky has to do, take that horse off her head and give it to him. Mm-mm-mm. This door gonna stop opening and closing. Tell Bernadette that to stop playing with that door. She ain't playing with the door, she's sitting right there. Uh-uh, she is just tossing it, playing sitting with that real pretty. door. Ain't you, Byron? Yes, that one is blowing. I like that a little bit. So, you know, screw love the hip-hop Atlanta. I don't, I really don't care for, no, I do care, because I want to see Rashida fire her husband. Mm -hmm. That looks like it's going to be something. And speaking of Rashida, me and her was eating at the same place on um, Tuesday, Monday, at um, Benny Hanna's. Shout out to her. Did she see you? I didn't see you because I, I was too busy eating to turn around and look at her. So who told you she was there? My friend that was oh. there with me. And then the ladies at the table. You was eating that hard that you couldn't turn around and look? Bitch, my first of all, I couldn't do, my neck was hurting and I couldn't do that like, ooh, turn around. What? Look at that door. Guess what this guy at my job had the nurse to do? What? I'm about to show you. I was over it. Oh. Ooh, 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 ooh. He gonna take a picture. Yes. He took a picture of it? Yes. I think you Instagram that. No, I didn't Instagram that. Oh. I posted it on Twitter, but I ain't Instagramming. Mm. Child, I would Instagram this. Did my life would have been over. What? And you know what's so cr- I, mm. well, I can't wait till this camera go off. <laughs> no, tell me no. because you're going to forget. I, I ain't going to forget. Tell me, me, No, we just No, just tell me. No! We talk about it. No, because we're going to forget. I ain't going to forget. I'm going to forget. Because once we finish, I'm going to get up and walk out, and you're going to say bye, and I'm going to say bye. bye. No, tell me. We know the same people. Your friend that, that you told me. <laughs> wait, which one? This kid. Talking about. Yes. Oh. You got to go. <laughs> you can't stay in here. You ain't got to go home. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get the fuck up on that on out of here, okay? Especially when I'm paying the tab every night. Mm. But see, that's why I say. That's why I'm, I'm saying I want yeah, my yeah. money. First of all, I don't want no weirdos around me. You got to get up and go. 
Mm. It was cute for a while, but now it's time to go. He's weird, weird. I can let him know you are weird. Yes, I did. He won't tell me. I said, bitch, so are you. <laughs> you kind of what? I said, bitch, so are you. But how? <laughs> how the pot going to call the cattle? No, but guess what I told him? What? Here I go. Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, I am. Something is. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, <laughs> I'm about to cry. <laughs> so let's talk about these needles. And these motherfucking sandwiches, bitch. So Delta Airline um, had some planes coming out of the Netherlands where somebody was sticking sewing needles inside of a sandwich. Oh, and a doctor happened to be one of the ones to actually bite into, it. bite into it. And he was giving his whole scenario on how the needle could have killed you. Man. Yeah, he was he was going off yeah. about five minutes talking about it. But whoever did it is from a gourmet company called Gate Gourmet in the Netherlands and they're doing this big full investigation. Well, they're here too. Really? That's not just in the Netherlands. I know, but that that's where it, it came from. Well, that's where it came from, but Gate, Gate Gourmet is all over in the airports. Because I see that all the time when I'm boarding a plane and they fill them up. So that's not just the Netherlands. I pay attention to that. Well, I pay attention to my surroundings, okay? Oh, wow. I pay attention to the flight attendants, right. the doors. The signs. And shout out to the flight attendant that knew who I was. I, I didn't get your name, but hey, how you doing, sir? Um, you know, I just think that that's very ru rude. Not rude, no. It's evil. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's evil. a lot of evil and wickedry going on lately. Like, people eating faces, people eating dogs. Now people eat putting needles in food and shit. Like, what the fuck is really going on with people? I never thought I would have to pay look real hard at what I eat. And y'all know I eat down. Y'all know this. And don't look at me because I see you. Don't do it, girl. I see it. Y'all know I eat. <laughs> Bitch, now I gotta look out for needles. I gotta look out for pennies and drug paraphernalia all in my food. I'm not here for that shit, man. And I hope that they fuck this person up. People really need to get beat like they used to back in the day. Put them on the thing like this and beat they ass, then send them to jail. Mm -hmm. I really think that, see, that, that's the problem. Y'all think beatings don't fucking work with people. Then y'all got the nerve to say beatings mess with people's minds mentally. <laughs> Where, bitch? Well, for, well I, think, Girl, I think what some people are confusing is an ass whooping and being abused, okay? <laughs> And ass whooping and being abused are two totally different things. Yes. I will explain. Mm. What Kevin and I got growing up were ass whoopings. Okay. And you see both of us are doing just fine. We love our parents to death. We would whoop somebody's ass for our parents. Right. I would never pick up the phone and call the cops and say my parents did this to me because I got ass whoopings, okay? After my mom and dad whooped my ass, I was put on punishment, and then maybe a day or two later, I was off punishment, and I was doing what Damn I was doing. Too. You oh, see I, what I'm saying? Well, I'm not. Used to be the worst. Child, my dad put me on punishment one time for a month. Mm. No outside and no TV, and you know TV is my life. Mm. Okay, but I'm just saying, ass whoopings and child abuse, sticking your child in a hot tub, taking an iron and burning your child, beating your child until their skin is bloody red. Now that is abuse. I ain't never get whooped like that, okay? My ass got whooped to where it hurt to sit down, but I didn't get no where I was bleeding or my parents threw hot water out on me. No. So I think some should some should really know the difference between abuse and an ass whooping, okay? I would tell you to whoop your child's ass, not abuse your child, okay? Because the ass whooping works. I do. Because I used to get them. Okay? But I, I don't I don't know, man, you probably gotta start putting food. Through metal detectors, like this is some bullshit. That's sad. Yeah, it's sad now. It's First of all, I don't even eat nothing from the plane. I might eat a peanut. You know, might eat a peanut or two. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. it. I don't think that's true. Cause I think on one trip to LA, I saw you order a sandwich. I ain't order no sandwich. Are you sure? Bitch, you ain't see me on no sandwich. Oh. You see me on my iPad and my headphones on. Wow. Well, with a, a Tylenol PM. I ordered a sandwich. Uh-uh, bitch. I ain't order no sandwich. I did. 
And then the airlines now they get and sell. They don't even want your cash. They only want your car. They only want your car. Yeah. They'll tell you in a minute. No cash. No cash. Well, who's flying the plane? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's what. Who the fuck is flying the plane? Down the front. Talking about no, no cash. No cash. Oh why? Y'all don't y'all don't get change back? <laughs> Would y'all want to be standing up that long in the aisle? Oh, we don't we don't dispense change. You want to dispense mm. it today? Let's talk about this Meat Mill versus Pastor Jomo. You, I know you heard about it, right? Heard about it? I heard the video. I listened to it oh today. Oh my God, it was hard. Yeah, I, I, at first I thought they was arguing on Hot 97. I said, them New Yorkers don't know nothing about Strawberry Mansion and Rainbow Rose and where I grew up at and Bloodbird, which is that shit. I said, they don't know nothing about that. But I listened to it and let me tell you something. Meat Mill, he was right on a lot of stuff. He was right because I don't know where this pastor came from. Mm -hmm. And like I told y'all, Meek Mills is the most famous person out of North Philly since Jill Scott. So. Out of North Philly. Yeah, out of North Philly, North mind Philly. you. Because I know a lot of people, I, I, because Will Smith is way bigger. Will Smith ain't from North Philly. <laughs> He's from West Philly. Because you know some people ain't from yes, Philly. You know they were. I, I, because Will Smith is big. How you going to say Meek Mills is bigger than Will Smith? Meek sure. Mills is bigger than Will Smith in North Philly. Philly. Okay? Will Smith is from West Philly. Damn near. On the show. Um, in West, West Philadelphia. Born and raised. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> you got it. Go ahead. So, you know, Pastor Jomo is mad at Meek Mill because of his song Amen. And, you know, basically his lyrics um, about rape and, you know, him, be I guess, him being from the streets and everything. And him, he has a big problem with Meek Mill. Long story short, Meek Mill's argument, it's not Mill's, Meek Mill argument is, where the fuck did you come from? And why are you singling out me out of a hundred rappers that come in fit and from out of Philly? He said, you're coming after me because I'm the most famous one. Mm -hmm. Are you coming at me because you want fame? Because if you needed money, I could have helped your church out with something or... If you was trying to do a song, I could have helped you out with Kirk Franklin or whatever. That's where he's coming from. And so the so the, the pastor still keeps going on about how Meek Mill was saying like how he want to rape women and um, how his music is not good and how he don't it's not godly or whatever. And I believe I heard Meek Mill say he don't believe in God or he did at one he point he don't video, believe in God. At one point he did say he wasn't a Christian or he don't. Yeah. He said I don't even believe in like I think that he probably was talking a little too fast when he said that because mm -hmm. then later on in the video he was saying how his family is all Christian and he so he did say it because I heard him too. Yeah, I, I, but I, mean, I think he was talking a little too fast and maybe he didn't mean to say yeah, that. They both wasn't. I don't know. They both wasn't listening to each other. Neither one of them was listening. It's kind of like kind of like Scorpion Show sometimes. But you know, they keep going back and forth. Nobody is somebody argument. But I really believe that that pastor needs to go somewhere and, and sit. I the pastor, you're coming at him for the wrong reason. Just like Meek Mill said, you didn't. I didn't see you say anything about when I gave coats to the people in Blumberg or when I gave sneakers to the basketball team, pay for their jerseys for the people at Strawberry Mansion. I don't see you saying anything about that, but I do see you trying to come at me talking about, you know, I need to be saved and I'm not this and I'm not that. And he kept not calling me, he kept calling him Robert Williams, which is his government name. I just, I just don't think that that pastor should have came directly at him. You know, if you want to come at them, talk about them at your church or whatever. Don't just single that one person out. Because you could be singling out drug dealers that's near Germantown and Somerset. I know there's drug dealers there. I could see, why can't you just start a rally against drugs or against violence in your neighborhood? Why couldn't you do that? Why you got to come at Meek Mill to put get your name on some type of platform? Me, myself, I... I side with Meek Mill because you're knocking his sister and what he do. Well, okay. Now, what I will say about this is I am on the fence <laughs> with this one, on this one because half of me sees where Meek Mills is coming from mm -hmm. with his whole, you know, argument of, uh, you know, him feeling as though the, the pastor is coming at him. But then a, another part of me is I, I kind of side with the pastor when the pastor is... I, I noticed in that interview... 
Everything that the pastor questioned him about regarding his lyrics, Meek Mill never answered. He never answered why he used, he talked about raping a woman in his song. He never talked about the lyrics that he used. I noticed that Meek Mill always jumped around the question as to why aren't you talking about the good that I do in my community or the good that I did in my community. Yes, Meek Mill has done a lot of good in his community. And yes, we all know that people are not going to always point out your good. They're going to always point out the negative. But I think that the point that the pastor was trying to make and he was trying to get a clarification from Meek Mills is why would you use terms and talk about such such hurtful things such as raping a woman? That is something that is serious to a lot of people, especially to a lot of rape victims. Because, you know, just recently there was this comic at the Laugh House over in California who one of the audience members actually challenged him because he did a stand-up skit about raping women and so they had this big debate and he was saying well you know comics you know they're, they're they say things a lot of off the wall and it, they had this big debate on CNN where they were saying yes there are some comics who have used you know rape as a topic in their stand up skits I think I heard about that I can't remember the comments. but a lot of them majority of them they <clears> use <throat> George Carla and Wanda, Wanda Sykes as, as an example two comics who have used rape in their skits but they've also pointed out the bad side of rape, of how rape isn't good. This guy was making it seem as though rape was something the victim's fault. And so I think that the pastor was trying to get out of Meek Mills is, how can you say, I, don't, I didn't hear the song, so I can't necessarily yeah, say what Meek Mills said. Because Meek didn't even remember the damn song. Yeah, damn song. But, see, that's, but see, I think the point was, if you notice in the argument, the pastor is asking Meek Mills the same question over and over again because Meek Mills is not answering this question. He never answered not one question from that guy. And I felt as though I wish Meek Mill would have brought it down like 20 knots so then he could have explained himself to this pastor because I do believe had he not been so aggravated and not been so upset, that could have been a really good discussion. But he he didn't he didn't, get, he didn't allow argue, himself I mean, say rap about shit. They yeah, half of them do, but he wasn't. But he was bringing his attention to Meek Mill because Meek Mills is a well-known rapper from this city, and I think that it's I think it was a fair argument. I don't, I I mean yes, the the pastor may be trying to get some fame out of coming out of Meek Mills. I mean he he I mean he probably is. I I don't know, but he probably is. But I think that had Meek Mills actually calmed down he and answered the questions then he could have better explained himself if if he found a way because if you if you notice Meek Mills just recently apologized for the lyrics of on one of his part. So I think yeah. maybe a little bit of that conversation that he had with that pastor probably struck a chord either with him or with somebody in his camp and said, look, you know, you do need to go out there and apologize because his whole argument on on the on the on the interview was well, I do this, and I do good, and I do this, but he never not once answered that guy's question. He never answered his question, and I was waiting for Meek Mills to get that, put that guy in his place, but he didn't. And so, and so Meek Mills, to me, looked like he was somebody who, he looked like he was a robber being caught in the act, and so he was just trying to justify why it is that he was doing what he was doing, why he did what he did by saying, oh, but look at the good that I did here. But that wasn't the argument. The argument is, why are you saying these things in this song? Not... What good have you done? Because we all know you've done good things, but why are you using these terms and these lyrics in your song? In your song? So that's just like asking well, why, well, why, why rappers say they want to kill people? Because that's what turn. Oh, that's what well, yeah, that's a good, that's a good about question. Rappers. That's a good point. I had to, oh, I blow your head off, and I, bitch, give me something. I want to dance while you rapping. But see, that's a good, point. Rapping, but see, that's a good you know? point too. But you see, just like you don't like to hear people say that about killing people, who wants to hear a rapper talking about raping a woman? I don't. Nobody. No. And so I think that's what the pastor point was. Why would you glorify something like that? Again, I'm not saying Meek Mills did because I didn't hear the song. Me but it seems like that's what the pastor was trying to get out of him. Why is it that you're glorifying something that's so tragic and so personal and so hurtful, especially to vape victims, and Meek Mills never answered that question? He didn't answer any Meek was questions. trying to find... Meek didn't even remember talking about it. That's why I feel like... Then that's why I think that the argument could have been so good had he calmed down and listened to what the pastor was asking him and then answered it whether he answered the way he wanted to or whatever. But, but I think he you, should have calmed the pastor down. Has a, the pastor's true agenda was calling himself trying to save Meek Mill yeah. and that Jesus Christ is the way to go. Yeah, and yeah that's yeah, that's true. Listen, let me tell you something. The pastor, say, nobody who don't want to be saved. Yeah. Okay. okay. If he if Meek Mills don't want to be saved at that very point in time. 
you can't save him because his mind. I I would. I don't want you to save somebody who who you forcibly save. Let him be ready to be saved and give his life over to God. Don't get. Don't come on the radio and try to make him. Mm -hmm. You know, be saved because it ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. That it's not gonna work at all. Got a fucking agenda. Yeah, I'm sure he did have an agenda, mm -hmm. but I think Meek Mill should have definitely listened and 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 and. and and took into what the pastor was saying to him rather than going off the way he did. And then the pastor, then the pastor, oh, me and you came from the same walks. I've been arrested for aggravated assault, and I did this and I did that. Let, let Meek Mill be ready to do it when he's ready to do it, if he wants to be saved or do anything. Just well, do I, you know, I just think that if anybody hasn't heard the video or if you yeah, haven't, you listen back to it, you're going to, you're going to really, you're going to hear what I'm saying by Meek Mill's never not once answered. And I listened to the whole interview. I listened to the whole interview and I, at the end of the interview, I tweeted about it and I said, damn, I wish Meek Mill would have just answered what this guy was asking him because he never did. And I really think that Meek Mill could have really, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't, I think next time, if Meek Mill doesn't want to talk about a certain topic, then he should not do the interview. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because clearly he didn't want to hear what the pastor had said. So Meek Mill, should, have, to me, should have never agreed to do it. Mm -hmm. Maybe because it's Philly Station, he wanted to do it. But like they kept saying, oh, we, wanted to, we should have did it off the camera, off the record or whatever. Whatever the case may be, Meek, keep doing your thing. Don't let people stop you from doing you. And that's it. Raspberry making videos again on YouTube or he sent it to World Star Hip Hop. I'm getting very, very bored with Raspberry. Raspberry, nobody is oh hitting on you. Oh my god, I'm sorry to cut you off. This girl is back again. Are you serious? And look, I have 93 mentions and I bet you they're all from her, yep. Yeah? Wow. What the fuck is the matter with it? Who is this? <laughs> I don't know. I see a whole trip out in Atlanta. <laughs> 93. <laughs> if your mint is popping off, I can only imagine what mine's saying. Y'all thought so y'all could get rid of me. <laughs> oh, look at her. Where, Joe? Is she in your mentions too? <laughs> I'm the new. I'm the new co-host and you guys will deal. I'm who? I'ma kill you all. She coming to that black boy. She ain't coming nowhere. What you gonna do if she comes? She ain't coming to us. She gonna get fucked up. <laughs> that bitch will get fucked up. You don't fuck with me or my family now. Who you who gonna fuck her up? Who ain't gonna fuck her up? You come if you want to. Starting your shit. But yeah, Raspberry bitch, let me tell you something. You hear the siren? That's the sound of the police. Woo woo! That means the cops is coming, nigga. <laughs> this is the sound that your career is over, bitch. You are on your way to the hospital, dead on arrival, bitch, because that's where your career is. Raspberry, nobody is fucking checking for you. I am so tired of hearing you say, oh, this person gay, that person gay, oh, Chris Stokes is gay, oh, Marcus Houston is gay, he raped all of us. Bitch, shut the fuck up. Don't nobody want to hear that shit no more. I don't even want to give him a heart to heart. Give him a heart to heart. Is my lips, uh, let me make sure my lips is kind of... You know, you know I was eating that seafood, so I know it smell like pussy. Oh, who? You know what? I don't want to hear that. I don't. <laughs> well, I, I bet not smell like no pussy. Mm -mm. Cause Mikhail came in like, you was eating seafood. I said, bitch, I damn sure wasn't fucking no pussy. Who is that? Hang <laughs> <laughs> <Anger>, it up. <laughs> I'm about to scream. I'm about to tell Kevin. I just showed. I just showed <laughs> Kevin that. <laughs> And he said, and I quote, <laughs> hang it up, flat <laughs> screen. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Why he say something smart? So there has been, this is, this is what I'm going to tell you. 
Hey, how you doing? My name is Kevin. I'm from The Scorpion Show. You can follow me on Twitter at The Scorpion. Raspberry. Nobody is fucking checking for you no more. The only bitch is checking for you is all the way over in China, bitch. China, ain't nobody know you. And what kind of music you got going on over there? Not a motherfucking thing. Another thing, stop saying that Chris Stokes fucked all of y'all. If he fucked y'all, that's not your story to tell for everybody else. Let everybody tell their truth when they want to tell their truth. Who the fuck do you think that you are to be sitting there saying, Oh, Chris, you did this and you did that and don't lie. Them some bitches, they some punk bitches and they're going to say, Oh, y'all trying to, y'all messing with a child of God. Well, who's to say that they're not child, children of God and you're not fucking with them? You preaching all of this, God saving me this and God doing this for me and God doing that. And you sitting there cursing out everybody. Oh, I'm going to fuck you up, bitch. I got goons that'll take care of you. I'm doing... Raspberry, shut the fuck up. Shut, just shut the fuck up. You need help. Just admit that you need help. Maybe you did get raped. And that's not something to play with if you did get raped. But if you got raped, why don't you get help? That's the easiest thing you could do is go get help. Tell my old shout out to Jay Boog, but fuck them other bitches. Oh, Maria, I think you should find God. No, bitch, I think you should find God. Because okay. I don't think you found him yet. Because when you find God, you don't act like that. You'll be like, oh, I just got baptized like her right here. You know, huh? you do Wait, stuff. what'd you say? <laughs> what'd you say? What'd you say? You know, what'd you say? Friends. The last thing I'm going to tell you is this. Last thing I'm going to tell you is this. Be blessed. You know, he got some fucking nerve. He got a lot of nerve. Talking about Chris Brown, I, I wasn't hey. coming for you. Bow Wow wasn't coming for this. Bitch. But he was coming for them at one yeah, point. Yeah, he, he claimed that that wasn't his account doing from his account. Girl, who do you think you're talking to? Boo Boo the Fool. Okay. And you might get them other girls like that. She won't get us. Okay. You might. You might. You might, you might, you might win some, some, but you just, just lost, lost one. Okay. Because <laughs> Lauren Hill lost a lot. Wait. Never I'm mad. I'm, I'm just. No, because I'm tired of him and his shit. Every yeah. couple months when he don't take his Wait, medicine. Wait, what happened? Because it you just know, goes I off. I don't pay attention to him at all. But apparently I heard that he almost lost his they life. They say he crashed through a window. This bitch crashed through a window and apparently cut one of his major veins in his arm. And they had to take him to the hospital. And so while him. he was in the hospital, he was making more star hip hop videos. In China. Yeah, making more star hip hop videos. In China? That's, That's where he was at. In China. He was performing all in China. Way, who checking for him all the way in China? Nobody. Nobody want no fucking Raz B. Omarion is the one. Omarion was the voice any fucking way. <laughs> Ain't nobody check for nobody else. <laughs> okay? Did I ever hear y'all sing? Don't you do it. <laughs> I ain't never hear y'all sing a day. Like, all there was Omarion. <laughs> Out of all the time of B2K, y'all was just his background singers, bitch. No shade. Y'all really was. No fizz back. Never mind. Let's stop. The last thing that I have on here is the American Idol judges. Steven Tyler and Jennifer Lopez said, bye girl, fly girl. Jennifer already knew she wasn't staying no more. Okay. Jennifer knew. She just was trying to keep it cute. She collected but couldn't put it on she, mute. She collected that, <laughs> that what? 15 million and ran, bitch. She was out. I don't think I could do it no more. 15 million dollars to sit at a table and tell people to And when you can barely sit. If I give you me, this is how it's got to be. First of all, I won't take your cheating on me. I've never heard J Lo sing live ever in my life. If you had my love, you. But she had some fucking hits up in here. Like, yes, she, she had hits. Her songs on the day. radio in the early 2000s, the late 90s. What? But don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the block. I used to have a little, now I have a lot. No matter where I go, I know where I came from. I came from the Bronx. But movie scrolls is something, something. J Lo to this. I stay counting the dough when I'm rolling. You can buy your head if you want. Oh, wait, that's not Jennifer. That's TLC. Sorry. <laughs> I'm real. Hey, I'm real. The way you walk, the way you talk. The way I'm real. No, my song is. You can get right before the night. Sure, that you was too. Right. Uh, 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 damn, my song. My song. I think my favorite.
Mary J. Lo song. It's not even a dance song. <laughs> all my pride is all I have. That song was everywhere. Like, you couldn't <laughs> escape that song. You turned the BET, the video one. Yep. You turned the MTV when they used to show videos. The video was on. It was everywhere. Every freaking with J. Lo. Let me tell you, you had some hits. Okay, that's why You was the shit, that. okay? Was the shit. But I do like Silly Heartbreakers, and I don't know why you didn't make that a single. Hypnotico, that should have been a single. Now you're on your new shit. But J-Lo say goodbye. Steven Tyler say, bitch, I'm just tired. I can't do it no more. I'm out of here. How much did he get paid? I don't even know. He Steven Tyler. Million. He probably got 10 million. But he's more popular than J-Lo. He, he is, got he work, way more. He got way more money. Anyway. Yeah. Al Smith will go on tour tomorrow, bitch, and they will be so out. So out, okay? Somebody <laughs> like don't play. Like okay, you get him some beer. You get him some <laughs> beer and a Corona, and give him one of those uh, glow up sticks. Mm. And they be partying out day. there. They know how to. They know how to get down. Give him so one of those look. 2012 glasses in July. <laughs> those New Year's Eve 2012 glasses in July, and they will have a fucking party. Okay. People don't play when it comes and, to party. And, and, and pool parties. Did you see the picture on the internet where they had a, a black, black pool, pool party? Yes, I did. Because <laughs> you know it's true. Black people will go to a pool party and sit around trying to okay. be cute. Okay, I don't wipe my hair in the pool. Okay. <laughs> Playing a party. They have a party. A house party yeah. at a white person's house. And then as soon as the party, they cleaning everything mm -hmm. up. When the parents come home, you would never think of it. And it don't even matter that they can't dance, bitch. They're going to be dancing anyway. Still so. shaking their flat ass. Hey, I just met you. <laughs> and this is crazy. I was dancing some girl to that song last two weeks ago. So, yeah, so they're going from America Idol. Okay. So, Aretha, she done threw her hat in the race, Aretha bitch. Aretha Franklin. Last week, she Star said, of God's to be real. She said, <laughs> I'm throwing my hat in there. She's more famous okay. for God's to be real than she is for yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Bad Child. Well, God. guys, we finally talked to her on uh, Sunday. Ciao. Even Aretha though it was a quick second. Aretha said, bitches, I could do this show. We, we need to introduce them into singing, mm -hmm. about, about singing, and she wouldn't mind bringing on Patti LaBelle. Mm -hmm. She said Patti LaBelle could, you know, do something, but then I but was Patti thinking... Patti LaBelle didn't want to do it. Yeah, Patti LaBelle still don't want to do it. But she Patti still do it. She said she can't see her judging people. Yeah. She don't want to crush nobody's dreams of yeah. But Patti, you, Patti is a diva, her, her damn self. Okay. Can you just imagine her and the shade? Okay. Uh, them hearing them sing and them putting that camera on them. Okay. Well, I thought Kim Burrell and Yolanda was doing something. Patti Bell be just like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> No. Can you imagine Aretha and Patti sitting up there together and then one say one thing, the other one disagree? Oh. <laughs> well, look, bitch, I got 18 well, grand got to you, too. <laughs> And then you know what Patty would do? She'll pull up that clip of her singing, You'll never walk alone. Okay. I freaking love that performance. Y'all have to watch that performance. Because Patty killed that shit. Patty mm. killed it, resurrected it, and killed it again. <laughs> she said, Jesus, who? No, I broke mm -mm -mm. on the third day. So, so Kathy Lee Gifford, she run, you know, I love her, Hold a Cot Beard. But she going to say she don't think Aretha Franklin should do it because if Aretha Franklin can't fly, she's afraid of flying and that the young people don't know who she is. So Aretha, bitch, she wrote an email to CNN. She, she didn't even email. She didn't even email NBC <laughs> where Kathy can hold a work at. Okay. She emailed CNN because she knew that CNN is way bigger okay. and she knew that CNN and everybody was going to see it. They okay? put them on and blast. And she knew CNN was going to put them on blast. Cause that's a, a rival network, mm -hmm. okay? And what did they do? They showed it to them. Okay. They aired that letter, and she said, "I got fans from eight to 90. 90. and I am known worldwide." She said, worldwide. "She said I am a she said that she said something about I'm a celebrity icon or whatever. She worldwide I worldwide icon, and being that I watch your show every day, I'm surprised that you." She said, you're up on your facts, but I'm surprised that you didn't know that about me. Ooh. Before you talk about me, bitch, research me. Ooh. That's what she's. The next time you talk about me, research me. Ooh. That's what she said. But they didn't want to hear that. They didn't want... Hold it and read all of that. That letter. She didn't say the bitch part. Though. Okay, no, she didn't say but bitch. But she did say research me. Okay. Okay. Bitch, I could bitch. I could bitch. Rita just cursing up a storm. Because I know she wrote the email. <laughs> I know she wrote it. She probably put on her reading glasses was and sat in front of that computer. And just like that. She was, uh -huh. <laughs> bitch. 
<laughs> she went up. Oh. She probably was but singing you know, while she was taking. Yeah. I would love to see Aretha, but my thing is her health. That's the only thing that I would be concerned about. Is she healthy enough to do the show? It would be great to see her, but no shade. I really want Patty to do it. I really want Patty LaBelle. Because Patty is hip. Patty is hip to these. Patty know these young girls. She know everybody. I don't know if Aretha knows everybody. Aretha knows She just shade her. That's mm -hmm. all. Patty LaBelle give him a chance. Mm -hmm. You know, Aretha's just real high class. You know, that's Mama Aretha, Pig. Aretha Franklin thinks that nobody's above her. She and, still, and, and still, still dumb. dumb. And still dumb. Oh, she do not get credit to They ask her, well, who, who, who do you think could be the next Aretha Franklin? Nobody. Nobody. So, it's only one. Okay. Girl, get your life. Can you imagine if Beyonce said that? Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> and then everybody will change the name. There will only be one on Twitter. You know how them girls do. Mm -hmm. Wait, but, but oh, who yeah, can yeah, you yeah. see as a judge on there? I could see Aretha. I would love to see Aretha Franklin because I think she's just shady. Um, <laughs> Mariah Carey or Celine Dion. Mm -hmm. um, but this is what I want to say because a few people were like, you know, they they kind of agreed with Kathy Lee by saying that uh, the young demographic don't. That's this bullshit. Because this know is Steve the point Tyler. that I had. Just the, this is the point I had to make. Because I said, okay, there are a lot of young people out there who may not know who Aretha Franklin is, which I find that a little kind of hard to believe. But hey, it may be true. They may not know who she is. But then I had to stop and remind, remind people. The first season, season of American Idol, the only big star on that show was Paula Abdul. Because who knew who Simon Cowell was? Nobody. And if you didn't know anything about music behind the scenes, who knew who Randy Jackson was? Nobody. Nobody. Because a lot of people thought that that was Michael Jackson's brother. That Randy Jackson that was hosting. You see what I'm saying? And it's like we learned over the years to kind of know who Randy and Simon are and what they do. But Paula, we knew who she was, even though she she hadn't had a hit in about ten or twelve years when she did uh, American Idol. But we knew who she was. And Steven Tyler, I think Steven Tyler, he's he damn near seventy. Yeah, he's damn near seventy. And if you if you think about it, him and Aretha are kind of in the same. Bracket because I mean he was out in the 70s. Mm -hmm. She was out in the 60s and 70s I mean even though some one of my followers made a point by saying well a lot of the young people today They listen to Aerosmith and, and that may be true But I think that Aretha Franklin if you don't know who Aretha Franklin is then your parents need to school you and educate you on music as a whole Okay, and I think that it's a little bit disrespectful for Kathy Lee to say that because you can always say well Who the fuck was Simon Cowell before American Idol? Nobody knew who he was. Nobody knew which who Randy Jackson was. If you weren't in the music industry, you didn't really know who he was. So how can you dare say that about Aretha Franklin? Yeah. Who the hell knew who Cara? Cara De Guardia. Who the hell? Who, I didn't know who the hell she was before American Idol, and I kind of still don't know who she. Let is. me tell you. I'll so tell how you. can you say that about Aretha Franklin? Mm. You know, I really think they should put their Diddy. I really think they nope. should put him. I would be able to deal with him. You know I why? Think they should put you know him why? Because I'm not here for Charles no, Sheen. No. Fuck no. I don't even know who I said think that. Diddy. But you know why I wouldn't say Diddy? Because Diddy would make it about him. Like he does <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything is about Diddy. Because you know he. Yeah, because you know I. Yeah. Sit down. You're corny. But Diddy, but he got some experience because he, he has does have experience, but he's too much about Diddy. You need somebody up there who's not going to be about them. And that's going to give them the fact. I, I don't want J Lo was there. about herself. Yeah, but, but she wasn't. Mm -hmm. J Lo was like one of the most sensitive. I say, I say, give give Diddy a chance. I think that I don't want to see Diddy. I think he's hip enough. He's hip enough to be that that man up there. I want to see a strong woman. So you want a woman as the lead judge on here? I would like that. I would like that. And I think as the lead judge, a strong woman that I can see as a lead judge, in my opinion would either be Aretha Franklin or Mariah Carey. Mm -hmm. If Mariah Carey would lose the little bit of the uh, I'm a diva darling and just get real serious. First of all, Nick Cannon, do me a favor. Stop talking for your wife, okay? I don't need for you, somebody told me, oh, well, he was asked this question. I don't care if he was asked it or not. I don't need for you to go out there and say, oh, America Idol can't afford Mariah Carey. Look, I don't need for you to say that, okay? If they, can't afford her, her, if they can't afford her, then let that not be known. Or let Mariah Carey say that. I don't need for you to come out because it just sounds a little arrogant on, on, on your part and on her part. I don't care to know that they can't afford her. You, maybe they can. Maybe they can. And maybe they just don't want her. Mm. Did you ever think about that? Maybe I, they just don't want her. 
You know, so I think Nick Cannon, you need to kind of stop talking for your wife. And when people ask you questions about your wife, you need to stop answering those questions, okay? Mm -hmm. Just stop. Just stop. I they think that they need them. a. I think they need a. Mm. I don't want to see because America Idol. America Idol has always been two guys and a girl. Yeah, it has been. That's why I think that if it is two guys and a girl, then the I think the next female judge should be the lead judge. Mm. I do. I think Aretha Franklin. I'm trying to think who could be. Yes, she would. I'm trying to think of anybody else besides her. Or Tony Braxton would be a good judge, but I can't see Tony Braxton in that lead role because I don't mm -hmm. think Tony Braxton would be tough enough. Aretha Franklin, I can see her now doing like she did doing that interview. What interview with Wendy? No, uh, uh, no, 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 no. Are you listening to yourself? <laughs> Are you listening to yourself? No, 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 no. You're not listening. I can see her being real, real. <laughs> Somebody walk up the stage, bitch. You ain't had a hit since. And she stand up and say, "What?" Somebody gotta do it. Or maybe they might make a. They might do a. a um. Oh. They gonna pick up Mel. Whitney Houston was alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know she was in talks to be on X Factor. I know that would have been the key. I think she had an interview later on that mm -hmm. day, like or that week or something yep. like that. That would have been a key. Girl, what? Whitney Houston up there? At least for a season, I she, would have yeah. gotten my life. I would have never missed an episode. Hell no! Especially if they mm -hmm. gave her something to drink every day. Mm -hmm. What? If she'd have been like, uh, well, like look, let me show. tell you this. I got something I gotta say. Brandy, if. Brandy, if they're not looking for a lead female judge, I think you should, you or Monica or Kelly should tip your hat in there. I think Monica. Y'all should tip your fucking. I'm Monica. real talk. I can see Monica. Real talk. Tip your hat in there. I can see Monica more than Brandy. Yeah. I can. Because we never seen Monica as a judge. Brandy's no. been a judge on. America's Got yeah. Talent. And then Brandy needs to focus more on what she's doing. I, yeah. I can so but, th but I think it would be great because you got 20 million people watching you every week. That's true, but I'm not here for Brandy and I'm not here for Kelly. I'm not saying I'm not here for them. I'm just saying I'm not here for, the for them situation. in those positions. Because mm -hmm. we've already seen Kelly do it. All right, fine. We've already seen Brandy do something similar. All right, fine. I'd rather see Monica. Because mm -hmm. I think Monica has that sass too. She's real sassy. <laughs> oh, but I would love to see Aretha Franklin. Or Shirley Caesar. Shirley Caesar. She was there. If it ain't about God, I ain't doing it. Shirley Caesar get there with her mic rolls and start singing. No, she don't sing. Sang. Mm mm mm. Yeah. So, America Idol, y'all better get it together and fast. So I know you want to talk about your girl. I ain't talk about it in this video. Beyonce with her little braids going on. Oh yeah, I don't really particularly care for him too much. I don't really like him. I saw this one picture that she looked cute in that particular picture, and um, I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't really care for him. The only thing I don't I care for him too much on Solange. Yeah, I was about to say yeah. that some people don't. They hate Solange with the braids, but they like, but Beyonce. they like Beyonce because it's Beyonce. But bitch, Beyonce looks just like Solange. She does. When I was looking at the pictures, I said. Then I said, oh, that's Beyonce. It's just, the, it's just that the hair color yeah. is different. But mm -hmm. her, you know, when you put, I think also when Beyonce wears that lighter, when she doesn't have on a lot of makeup, which she didn't have on in those pictures with the baby, mm -hmm. and when she looks young, her and her sister look just alike. Mm -hmm. They look just alike. I just, I don't, I'm not, I'm not really here her. for those braids. They, they, remind, me, was they remind me of country teens, mm -hmm. like down south, mm -hmm. like Texas. Shit, I want be, I want to be able to go back to braids because I love the cover on, um, the writings in the wall. I like the brand. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm not judging you. I'm not. I'm not saying. You know, because I saw some people who were like, "Oh my God, Beyonce got braids! Wow!" And I'm thinking like, "But well, Beyonce wore braids half of the Survivor era." Really? Like, or was that Survivor writing on the walls? Wait, did she have braids in the Survivor video, or was that Micros? She did have some type of braids in her hair. I mean, she had braids and. Fight temptations. So long ago. Yeah, so I'm like, this is not new with Beyonce wearing braids. I mean, hello. Mm -hmm. But you know, some of the kids will kind of yell there. But yeah, whatever. Just a shout out to B and Blue, Blue Ivy Blue is big for six fucking months. Blue, just like her fucking father. Okay. Okay. <laughs> she got that father. She's, she's a cute pretty, baby. She's pretty than with those and pictures. And let me tell you something. Look like. That baby ain't missed a meal. I don't know what kind of milk okay. Beyonce got in her breast. Okay, because we know she was breastfeeding. I don't know what kind of milk she got on her breast, mm. but that baby ain't miss a meal, she ain't miss a dessert, and she ain't miss a midnight snack. Mm. 
Well, you know they they meant to be thick girls. They are. That they're meant to be chunky. thick. But she's chunky on the cute side. Mm -hmm. Like she's not chunky on the fat side. She's chunky on the cute. You know, some babies you like, oh, you need to. Like that bitch. She's very cute, and she looks just like her daddy. Mm -hmm. And got all that hair. Hey, blue ivy. So the scorpion. Yeah. Let me show you who took the picture? This was inside of the store. Oh, so somebody these pictures, that worked there? I don't know. It may have been somebody who was actually like shopping because these pictures are outside of the store. You see the faces mm -hmm. coming up, but then this is inside of the store. Yeah, somebody snapped somebody that. snapped that without them knowing. <laughs> For those of you that didn't see the baby picture of Blue Ivy, if it focuses, look how pretty she is, looking like her father. Don't you look like your father? I look like my dad. Oh, look at my nails. I got a manicure. Well, I always get my manicures, but yeah. Yeah, look at her looking like her father. It's like, I'm stuck. <laughs> Who is her father? Sean Carter. Don't, don't try it, bitch. <laughs> don't you try it. Can you imagine a big singer being on more? See, she looks nice right here. I like that picture right here. She looks, she That's looks Solange. like Solange. Yeah, she yeah. looks like Solange right there. I'm glad B got a new hairstyle finally. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> we'll talk to y'all later. <laughs>